G'day everybody, welcome back to the Aussie Lawn and it was nearly, actually I nearly didn't have time to do this episode this week uh, due to family commitments and stuff like that. Um, this video nearly didn't happen but at the last minute I got a bit of time so I thought I'd quickly race out and uh, punch together a video for you guys. So um, as you can see here, just done a quick cut on the green and we're going to actually focus more on the green next week. So um, at the moment it's it's okay, but it's not uh, it's not a patch on the front lawn, and I'm not uh, I'm not fully happy with the green as it is. But we'll focus more on that from next week, so next episode. Uh, so today we're going to talk about and apply PGR on the front lawn. So the plant growth regulators, we're going to talk about the benefits, how to apply, when to apply, all that sort of stuff, um, because you know. It, it's going to save you a lot of time, save you water, save you all these sorts of things. Um, also, I'm going to show you what's happening in the Little Tiff Dwarf project. Um, we've got, I've got some update there for you. So, without further ado, let's uh, let's kick it off. Right, so we're at the front here now, and as you can see, just there, it is looking absolutely fantastic. Um, even when I just do that there like that. Um, really really recovered so time to start hitting this well start to plan the first application of the plant growth regulator the PGR uh, unfortunately since I just did the intro the weather's really closed in I actually did have a little bit of a interruption in the middle there um, so it's going to be too um, too breezy now and too iffy with the weather to apply it um, so what I actually did instead was I actually give it a uh, a trim I give it a mow that's why it's striping up pretty nicely at the minute um, what happens is especially with PGR uh, the, one of the critical comments is you're not to apply it six hours before or six hours after mowing so I decided I'd mow it which means it takes me out of the ball game of what takes me what am I trying to say it means I can't spray the PGR for now six hours but Given the, uh, the weather, it's uh, turned pretty nasty. It's been very humid all day, it's sort of um, all morning that is. And I reckon we're in for a storm. So there's no actual point in putting it down today. So hopefully first thing in the morning. All right, so we'll come around the back here again. And uh, as you can see, there's been a huge change here in our little Tiff Dwarf nursery. So you can clearly see now without even zooming in, all these little cores or little plugs have started to run and that's fantastic to the point that it's actually spurred me on as i said last week to extend our um our little nursery with the hope of having this entire strip so the width of that right to the end there have that whole area plugged out with dwarf uh, tiff by the end of summer and i reckon that's pretty achievable so um i actually even gave this here its first haircut the other day so all i did was i grabbed the um the Scott Bonner, which is set up at, what do we say, six and a half um, at the front. And I just ran over it the other day really lightly and it's responded to that beautifully. So um, yeah, that's that's looking good. Probably getting ready now to give the, um, the new killed patch a second hit of glyphosate is a few pit a few pitches a few a few pieces there that haven't actually managed to get um, enough chemical because there's a little bit of green or I've probably missed it truth be told I've probably missed it and uh, I need to fix that up now up the back there I was pretty careful um, I was pretty careful not to uh, get any overspray and you saw I had those really wide timber boards and stuff like that but and I do it on a very calm still day but actually got a bit of spray drift which surprised me so it just shows you how uh, careful that you need to be with um, with the roundup because obviously uh, I thought it was calm, I thought it was still and I thought I wasn't anywhere near causing any drift. I mean, it's not gonna, it's not gonna kill anything but it can show things that are really, really sensitive to, uh, to glyphosate and if you actually get it wrong, um, yeah, you can get some pretty bad damage pretty quick. So yeah, that's, that's it. Let's have a quick look at the, um, the buffalo, um, how it's recovering. I still haven't had a chance to spray that yet but uh, we'll talk about it in a sec. Okay, so as you can see, 
uh, even from last week's video, it's just in continuing to improve out of sight. Obviously, the other thing that's performing out of sight right now are these broadleafs right here. Um, it's actually a bit calm around here. I could probably, no, look, I won't. I won't risk the spray for the spray drift reasons, but um, that'll be another job. As soon as I get the opportunity to get on here, uh, it'll get hit with a uh, broadleaf killer suitable. So if you guys are looking for options for that, bow and arrow springs to mind. That's the one that everyone generically goes to. However, if you're a, uh, if you prefer to shop at a retail store, um, I think Yates Buffalo Pro is one I've used in the past and had pretty good results with. Um, but yeah, look, coming back leaps and bounds, um, soft, 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 and getting ready for its first cut. Now, I did get a couple of questions in the comments about this, do I, uh, train it back up to its height or do I go straight back up to its full height now in the past and I'll continue to do so I just let it go straight sorry about the flies um, I go straight back up to its full height because I don't want to start encouraging it spreading out I want it to grow upright so um, its main mission right now is to grow tall if I start cutting it and bringing it back up so say I cut it at you know one and a half inches then two inches then three it's just going to encourage it to run when I don't want it to do that I want it to be upright I want it to be as upright as possible because I feel personally and it's a personal thing I feel that that creates a nicer buffalo lawn and it's no surprise to any of you guys by now that I'm all about long buffalo as opposed to um, short buffalo but uh, yeah apart from our broadleaf weed issue this is going along gangbusters okay I'm sure most of you actually I'm sure most of you by now uh, are fairly aware of what a PGR is or a plant growth regulator uh, so this would probably be, have to be the most well-known, I guess the original if you want to call it. Uh, this is Primo Max by Syngenta. Now they actually sent me some of this to try out. So um, yeah, so anyway, so look, why should you uh, use a plant growth regulator? Obviously, um, especially with short cut turf, makes life a lot easier for maintaining things at that shorter height of cut. So. Um, it can reduce your mowing frequencies, obviously. The shorter the turf, the more mowing it needs. You can't just let it you know, grow right up and then mow it back down. It's gonna look pretty terrible pretty quick. So that's obviously the biggest feature to this sort of thing here um, is slowing down the rate of growth to keep your lawn looking more like a little short green carpet if that's what you want for longer. Now, some of the side benefits to this, or some people might call it a main benefit. Um, a lot of you guys now are running the, uh, the Tiff Tough, the new Bermuda grass there, or cooch grass. Um, and there's been a bit of talk about the seed head and that sort of thing. So the first thing that this is gonna do is actually reduce the seed head of your uh, Tiff Tough or any other variety of grass for that matter. Um, it's also applied correctly, gonna give you an increase in color uh, because the plant can focus more of that chlorophyll on less leaf. So in a, in, a, in a direct result, you're going to get a greener a greener lawn. It's actually going to also encourage the root system to go down nice and deep. So the roots are going to keep growing nice and strong. It's just going to um, what's more, it's just going to slow the, the, the leaf and the stem uh, stem growth right down. Um, it's also going to encourage your lawn to be tighter and denser. Uh, in the case of cool season, it's going to tiller more, so it's going to thicken out um, by sending out more tillers. In a warm season, it's going to create a nice, denser, uh, tighter uh, canopy, so more shoots of the, uh, the leaves of the stems and that kind of thing there. Um, now, when it comes to applying this stuff, the, the only way to apply this stuff is with a pressurized sprayer. So be it a backpack or a hand sprayer, and preferably with the flat fan nozzle on it. Now, the um, there's a couple of different rates, obviously, depending on what you're maintaining. So obviously, cool season, bent putting greens, warm season, cooch lawns like this one, and right up to the um, taller cocu stuff, buffalo, etc. So in the label, it'll talk about all of that. Now, frequencies, frequencies of application, you can do this two main ways. Number one is just go off the label here and it'll say four to six weeks or something like that. Um, or you can use a tool called a GDD, so growing degree days. And what that does is it's a formula and I'll put a, a, uh, a link in the description below to the Syngenta website that's got a tool for this and I'll talk about it briefly now. So what it does is click on that link, it'll take you there, enter your postcode if you've got, and then it will bring up this um, table 
enter the details there. So your weather, so your local postcode will give you your weather. Obviously, if you've got a warm season grass, set your base at um, 10 degrees. If you've got a cool season grass, set your base at zero. So it gives you two options, zero and 10. So you're gonna set that at 10 for warm season like I'm gonna do. And then you'll start, um, what am I trying to say? It's like a timer, I guess. It's like a timer. So you will, it'll work on your minimum and maximum temperatures and it'll create an average temperature for those and it'll count up to, now I'll give you the example from my lawn here. So Santorana um, lawn here at probably short T, long green height, so six and a half millimetres. Um, so you're looking at 250 uh, growing degree days. So what it'll do is once the every day goes by with the temperatures, once those temperatures add up to 250 degrees, or GDD of 250, sorry, um, it's time to reapply because what that'll do is it'll reapply before this stuff gets a growth spurt because obviously by applying any of these, these sort of plant regulator products, uh, it's like locking a dog up in a cage for a week or so. It's gonna have all that pent up energy waiting to be released. So you let the dog out of the cage and it goes around lunatic, lunatic, running around, running around uh, until it exhausts itself out of energy. But obviously it's a spike. So to beat the spike, you follow the, uh, the tool on that, on that link and you will have consistent turf like this without that spike. So that's ideally what you're aiming for. Um, I can't really, it gets really wordy to keep talking about this sort of stuff, but um, it's kind of important. It's hard to sort of, I guess, make it sound any more interesting, um, but that's probably the best way to do it um, for your local, for your personal situation, sorry. So, um, yeah, as I said, 250 growing degree days for this sort of situation. If you had a, a Kikuyu lawn, for example, that was slightly longer, you could potentially set yours at 300. So once your counter of days, um, your GDDs and hit 300, for example, you would then reapply this stuff here. And you can set up reminders. So on that, when you click on that link, you can set up reminders that uh, will tell you that, hey, it's time to reapply your, uh, your Primo Max or whatever you're using to avoid that spurt because that's actually gonna set you back further with your turf. It's gonna encourage scalping behavior. It's gonna encourage a, uh, a less pretty surface. And let's be honest, we've, we're spending time on our lawns to make them look fantastic, to make them look great. So um, yeah, that's the best tool I can give you guys. So um, consider something like this. Um, have a little look at the link, check it out, have a play with it, get a feel for it um, and I'm hit me up with any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, yeah, that's what I've got for you this week on PGR. But it's time to sign off guys. Look, as I said, it's been a bit of a half rushed, I guess, episode this week. I've had, um, as I said, family commitments, so I nearly didn't do anything at all. So look, if this is not fantastic, I'm sorry. It was either this or nothing. So look, you guys have a fantastic weekend. We'll see you next time. Take care. I'm Brenton signing off, Huru.